You could say I'm kind of addicted to my phone. It's the first thing I think of when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I do when I go to sleep at night and everything in between. I use my phone outside, I use my phone while eating, I use my phone in the shower to listen to music and videos don't get it twisted let's take a look at my phone screen time don't judge me i know it's gonna be really bad okay so for the week of july 17th to 24 my average was 10 hours and 34 minutes a day but okay the number one app that i use is youtube and a lot of the times when i'm just doing something like doing easy edits or cleaning my room i put youtube in the background so that's my number one my second most used app is google maps for 11 hours that's just because whenever i go in my car it connects to apple carplay so it automatically goes on google maps after that is instagram reddit snapchat all of the social medias i know it's it's really bad it's really bad guys it's it's really bad according to eMarketer, the average u.s adult spends three hours and 43 minutes on their phone and picks up their phone 58 times a day wait let me see how many times i pick I picked up my phone 157 times a day on average. <laughs> I honestly don't have an excuse, guys. I just didn't even realize that my phone usage was this bad. Some studies show higher numbers, some studies show lower numbers, but nonetheless, these numbers are all excessive. Honestly, the average number seems low compared to me. <laughs> The first step is admitting that you have a problem. The second step is actually doing something about it. So while I was scrolling my phone the other day, I came across best dressed video of a week without a phone and it inspired me to do my own challenge and see if I can actually go a week without a phone. But then I realized I needed to set realistic goals for myself. So that's why it's going to be 72 hours without a phone. I also created the four following rules. Number one, for safety reasons, I am allowed to keep my phone on and bring it with me whenever I exit my house, but I cannot use it unless it is for emergencies slash the last resort. Number two, I cannot access social media like Instagram and Facebook on my laptop. I am allowed to use iMessage, email, and FaceTime on my laptop. Number four, I can use my phone to take videos for this video since I don't bring my camera camera everywhere I go. Now with that ready, let's start the challenge. It is almost time to start my no phone challenge. I am going to begin my stopwatch. It is 11.53 p.m. So after I start the stopwatch, I'm not going to use my phone in a very long time. Okay, guys. Start. Good morning. Let's just get up right now. I'm not crying. My contacts just makes it look like I cry. <laughs> The first thing I always do is wake up and scroll on my phone. I check all the notifications I miss, but today I couldn't do that, so I got up right away. According to a survey conducted this year, 71% of Americans say that they check their phones within the first 10 minutes of waking up, so I'm not alone in this habit. I noticed I had an urge to use my iPad to do all the things my phone once did, so I decided to confiscate that as well, except for drawing my animations, titles, and other YouTube-related things. I 
ate breakfast for the first time in forever without a device in front of me. I would literally be so hungry in the mornings, but I just had to first choose a video on YouTube to watch before I started eating. I literally don't know why. After breakfast, I was bored, so I just began doing productive things and completing my to-do list, whereas before, I would spend some time catching up on social media, checking my statistics, and just scrolling out of boredom. It's the afternoon now. I've been editing all morning and I'm like done all of the big edits. So I'm kind of getting a tension headache from staring at a screen for so long. So I'm going to go pick up some stuff that I need to get and also go to the coffee shop and maybe look at some books because my friends got me gift cards to the bookstore and to the coffee shop and I'll see if I want anything. I'll also do some journaling and planning there too. Driving to the beach alone, I'll do it. This kind of reminds me of one experiment conducted in 2014 where people would be put in a room for 15 minutes without devices or anything. They could push a button and shock themselves if they wanted to, even though all participants have previously stated that they would pay money to avoid being shocked with electricity, 67% of men and 25% of women chose to inflict it on themselves rather than just sit there and quietly think. People have a really People have such a hard time being alone with our own thoughts and memories that they legit shock themselves. I think it's kind of funny. Right now, I just want to sit down on my bed and look at memes on my phone. But unfortunately, that's not an option. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. I feel like not being able to check my email, my statistics, my notifications on my phone is like making me have a lot of anxiety. Okay, you know what? I'm going to meditate right now. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. Then take a nice, slow, deep breath in deeper than you've taken all day so far. First of all, I miss you. Oh my gosh, I just had so much anxiety for some reason. There's always these thoughts in my head and what I sh have to do next and this and that and it's like a constant intrusive thoughts inside my head. <sighs> Meditation helped me. I think maybe for my next video, what I was gonna do waking up at 5 a.m. for a week next and then after that maybe I'll do meditating every day for a week. But we shall see. I'm sorry, I don't need nobody. That may be you Is it true love if I don't love anyone else? Maybe it's time that I start lying to myself I feel like even having this issue of a phone addiction is such a first world problem anyways and it really makes me feel stupid that this tiny device has so much control over my life. Like Rebecca, there's bigger problems in this world. But I just want to be honest, personally in my head I'm always thinking all the time, telling myself stories, playing memories, or daydreaming about things that will definitely never happen. That's why I have to listen to podcasts to sleep to distract myself from my intrusive anxiety inducing voice my head. Meditation trains our brain to acknowledge these uncomfortable feelings, but instead of letting it affect you and your actions, you acknowledge them and just let them pass. Okay, I just went to my friend's bonfire thing. I'm not gonna lie. I used my phone once to check the address 
and plug it into my GPS on my car and number two to GPS it the way back and I really didn't know how to get home so and changed into comfier clothes nighttime routine there were so many times that I wanted to pull out my phone today at the bonfire because I just felt like awkward but I did not first of all I miss you and secondly I never want to see your face a 2018 NCCIH supported analysis of 142 groups of participants with diagnosed psychiatric disorders such as anxiety or depression examined mindfulness meditation approaches compared with no treatment and with established evidence-based treatments such as cognitive behavioral therapy and antidepressant medications. The analysis included more than 12,000 participants and the researchers found that for treating anxiety and depression, mindfulness-based approaches were better than no treatment at all and they worked as well as the evidence-based therapies so right now would be the time where i would curl up in bed with my phone and in order to fall asleep i usually put on a podcast or a youtube video in the background but we can't do that today so i'm going to read hopefully i finish this book by the end of this challenge because i feel like i've been reading it forever Good morning, day two without a phone. The second day was going great. I couldn't believe how easy it was to be disconnected from my phone. I got up right away and did my daily morning habits, brushed my teeth, washed my face, had breakfast, did my skincare, drank coffee. My life is like a theater where she makes her appearance every day and every day it's the same old play She's the main character the heartbreaker the savior and the one that got away so far away it's so close to me here's some fun terminology nomophobia is the fear of going without your phone text aphrenia is the fear that you can't send or receive text messages phantom vibrations is the feeling that your phone is alerting you when it really isn't in one study conducted in 2015 with 249 participants 83.5 percent have experienced phantom phone sensations i know that i've had this happened to me in the past as well. There is some debate among medical and mental health professionals about whether or not problematic cell phone use is truly an addiction or the result of an impulse control issue. Your brain releases a chemical called dopamine when it feels rewarded. This can happen when we eat tasty foods, exercise, and in this case, successful social interactions. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about how apps on our phones take advantage of this reward system in the brain to make us more addicted. Yeah, I'm just in the atmosphere, heartbroken. You never know, cause you never know I'm here as she basks in our thunderous cheers. And when it is getting hard.
harder to mask these feelings that I harbor for her. Cause she's just out of reach, even when she's right in front of me. And on the days when she's miles away, I can still see her face. I guess I'm a ghost and she is a dream. The most beautiful thing I've seen. Good morning guys. Day well, day three without a phone. Hey, I think you're cute. Can I hit you up on it? According to an article published by Harvard University called Dopamine Smartphones and You, a Battle for Your Time. Current research regarding addiction and reward learning has recently focused on something called reward prediction error encoding. Let's take a look at slot machines, for example. You pull the lever and then you have an intense anticipation while the wheels in the slot machine are turning. The time between the lever and getting the result allows for dopamine neurons to increase their activity, which creates a rewarding feeling by just playing the game. When more and more negative outcomes accumulate, we will want to disengage from the game. Therefore, both negative and positive outcomes must be balanced in order to keep someone addicted. So how does this relate to smartphones and apps? Variable reward schedules were introduced by psychologist B.F. Skinner in the 1930s. In his experiments, he found that mice respond most frequently to reward-associated stimuli when the reward was administered after a varying number of responses. Thus, the animal could not predict when it will get rewarded. Humans are no different. If we perceive a reward to be delivered at random, and if checking the reward comes at little cost, we end up checking habitually. For example, in a gambling addiction. If you pay attention, you might find yourself checking your phone at the slightest feeling of boredom purely out of habit. Programmers work very hard behind the screens to keep you doing exactly that. But even if I'm sleeping up all night just thinking of the words I want. Hello guys, it's 12.30 a.m. Which means 72 hours without my phone. Okay, let's see. Okay, wait, first I'm gonna look at my screen time. My screen time. Let me screenshot these. I'm gonna go to sleep. My new video is uploading right now, so I'm gonna debrief tomorrow. Now for our final thoughts and reflections. By the way, I'm wearing the same clothes because I filmed my intro after I was already done the challenge. So let's reflect on the past 72 hours. The first point I wanted to touch upon was that phones are not the enemy. Phones can be essential for safety reasons, especially as a young girl going out alone. It's very important that I have contact with my family or the police if I ever need help or with maps if I'm ever lost. Speaking of maps, I rely on Google Maps a lot because I have a really hard time memorizing roads and routes and I'm always going to different places. Without Google Maps, I'd definitely be lost every time I went outside. Phones are also useful for contacting family if you don't live with them and staying connected with friends. My phone also has Apple Pay so it's useful if I forget my wallet at home and I have to buy something like food. Phones also have a lot of useful productivity apps like habit trackers and to-do lists and stuff and they also have apps that you can just quickly check your email in case there's anything important. You don't have to open up your whole laptop but there are obviously downsides. So for the past three days, I've had the urge to check my phone I've noticed in the following four situations. The first situation is I have a strong urge to check my phone every time I wake up in the morning because I just want to 
give myself that little dopamine rush and I want to check everything that I missed throughout the night. Fighting that urge was definitely really hard um, and the only thing that helped me was just getting up out of bed right away. But it actually did make me more productive because usually I would wake up and scroll my phone for 10-15 minutes. Secondly, I have the urge to check my phone while I'm doing something mundane, boring, or I'm waiting for something. For example, when I'm waiting in line in Starbucks or when I'm walking somewhere. Number three, I have the urge to check my phone in awkward situations. You know, we've all done that thing where you're passing by a stranger. I don't know if this is just me because sometimes I get scared of strangers. Sometimes I'm like really like socially awkward around strangers. So sometimes when I walk past them, I just pull out my phone so I don't have to make any eye contact with them or say like hi but I didn't do that for the past three days and I'm trying not to do that in general just say like a little wave a little hi the last one I think is the most important to touch on I have the urge to check my phone in order to distract myself from my own thoughts and this is most prominently reflected at night so at night, I usually like to listen to podcasts or a really long YouTube video. That's why before this week, my YouTube usage was so high because I would just fall asleep to a video at night and it would autoplay sometimes all night. It would really skew the hours. That's because at night, all those intrusive thoughts come in, like you think about that one embarrassing thing you did three years ago and you just like... <sighs> In the 8th grade, on the very first day at my new school, I literally face planted in front of everybody and still makes me cringe to this day, but that's okay. A lot of little moments of our life are occupied by devices. For example, in the shower, sometimes I would watch a video or play music while I'm cleaning my room or making my bed or in the washroom. All of those little moments are occupied by our phones. Not having my phone kind of allowed me to enjoy things without distractions like nature when I was going on a walk allowed me to be more comfortable in awkward silences around my friends and allowed me to take charge and actually calm my own anxious thoughts so I did do some meditation for these past three days and it was really helpful. But of course, I only went without my phone for 72 hours, so that part isn't really a big deal. But the life-changing part isn't the fact that I went 72 hours without a phone. It's that I was so addicted to my phone before, like an average of over 10 hours a day is an issue. And I've had a phone, I've had a device for the past 8 years of my life. I thought I couldn't spend half a day or one day without my phone, let alone three. I used to tell myself that it just wasn't something that I could change. It's just who I was. Haha, <laughs> I'm just like addicted to my phone. But it's not a joke. But now I've kind of had the mentality that I'm like sick and tired of just existing through life and having things happen to me and then just feeling helpless. However, now I'm kind of trying to change my lens. I am not a slave to life. Life is doing things for me. So many things that I used to think were out of my control, like the way that I looked, like the subjects I was bad at, my career, my relationships, my boring and uninteresting life. These are all things that I can work towards changing if I really wanted to, or at least try to become better or try to change my mentality about it. We might not be perfect because nobody is. Things may take time and mistakes will be made. Things might not work like we wanted them to, but remember that nothing good in life comes easy. Remember to prioritize your mental and physical health. That's it for today's video. Wait, actually guys, um, I was so caught up in my rant that I forgot to actually tell you the final results of my challenge.
So on Wednesday, July 27th, my total screen time was 60 minutes, but 44 of those minutes were Google Maps. So technically it was 16 minutes and then 13 of those minutes was clock. So it was just me checking the time. And then four minutes was a camera. So me recording videos, 12 seconds was team snap that was for checking the address of a player on my soccer team and then uh, music was nine seconds and then on thursday july 28th i used my phone for one hour and 28 minutes but the whole one hour and 28 minutes was just me using google maps the reason it counts as screen time is because it connects to my apple carplay on my car friday july 29th it was 11 minutes one minute was google maps i think it was an accident and then one minute was wechat because my parents were getting mad at me i had to respond to something really quickly on there and then 48 seconds was my camera so excluding google maps and camera my final average screen time for the three days was this back to the video oh and lastly i was super exciting life event to tell you hint I'm moving to a new city for a new job alone for the very first time. I'm so excited to show you guys my move and my apartment. I'm anxious, not gonna lie. I'm very scared for the future. I'm feeling very overwhelmed. Not sure how I'm gonna balance everything yet. There's a lot of stuff that you don't really think about unless you actually start living alone. But I'm also really excited for this chapter of my life so if you want to see that stay tuned for my next video i'm gonna post a few stories beforehand on instagram so follow me on there and um